Hello everybody, welcome back again to another edition of Algebra 2. Uh, as always, I am your host, Mr. A, and uh, and today I'm uh, wearing a new shirt. Hmm? Do you see anything here that looks um, familiar? Um, we're in section 6.2 today. Uh, we're going to talk about inverse functions and relations. So inverse functions and relations today. Uh, our objectives, first of all, uh, we want to find the inverse of a function or a relation. And number two, uh, determine if two functions or relations are inverses of each other. Okay. All right, so let's start with inverse relations, first of all. Um, so remember, a relation is a set of ordered pairs. And uh, so in this case, uh, we've got A and B, and it says they're inverse relations, and if you look closely, you'll notice what's the difference between these uh, in A, 1, 5, in B, 5, 1, in A, 2, 6, in B, 6, 2, in A, 3, 7, in B, 7, 3. What happened there? Okay, the X's and the Y's switched places. That's all that happened. So uh, when we're talking about an inverse relation, pretty simple. We're just going to switch all the x's and the y's. That's considered uh, an inverse. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at this. Uh, we've got the ordered pairs: one, three, six, three, six, zero, one, zero. Um, it's a rectangle, and uh, we want to uh, find the inverse. Okay. This is not very difficult here. All we do is we say, well, the inverse of one, three would be three, one. 6, 3 would be 3, 6, 6, 0 would be 0, 6, and 1, 0 would be 0, 1. So that's our uh, new relation that is an inverse to the other one. Not very difficult, is it? Hey, kind of nice. All right. Um, and then it says, uh, finally, describe the graph. Well, the graph's already pre-done here, so I'm just going to stick this up. And let's look at what this looks like. All right, so here's here's the graph. The, the one in the green um, is the original one. So one three six three is over here. Six zero one zero. And you notice our new one is the blue one. So uh, three one is right here. Three six zero six and zero one. Now the the interesting thing here is when you see this laid out. The inverse is here. You see this line y equals x? That's what they call the identity function. Um, these two um, relations here are reflected across this uh, y equals x line, okay, the identity function. Um, basically, what that means is in our original square or rec rectangle here, this uh, point right here it got reflected across this line, directly across this line over here. This uh, point down here at 6, 0 got reflected directly across over here. This point of uh, 1, 0 got reflected directly across this line over here. And then this other point was on the other side and it got reflected back across over here. So notice all these points basically got switched to the opposite, opposite side of this line. You can almost kind of think of it as if this line is like kind of almost like there's a hinge right on this and the whole thing just kind of can kind of flip back and forth on that so anyway that's kind of a key concept there that uh, with these inverses that they're reflected uh, across this line okay so that's first one not too bad right excellent secondly today we're going to talk about um, functions then now just like uh, inverse relations and inverse function uh, you can have an inverse function and so in this case you notice here they, they have this this terminology here basically what this means is you know normally we see f of x you know equals something and then you see this other thing here this you'll usually see it written like this f and then the negative one of x this does not mean raised to the negative first power. This is not a negative um, exponent. It's just a, um, a way to notate that this is the inverse of that function. 
So when you see f of x, that's the function, the original function, and then this notation here means the inverse of that function, okay? So this is just a, a type of notation. It doesn't mean it's a negative exponent. Um, basically what this uh, table here is saying, that if you plugged in 6 uh, for the function, you'd get 2. Uh, remember this, what you get out here, this is like your y, okay? Remember when you plug in f of x, 6 is x, and then what you get here at the end, remember f of x, or in this case f of 6, what you get for your answer, that's your y. So when we plugged in 6 for x in this function, we got 2 for y. Well, if you have the inverse of that, it's going to be exactly the opposite. If you plugged in 2 for x, you're going to get in this inverse function 6 for y. Notice they just changed. Remember like what happened in the uh, inverse relation? We changed the x's and the y's? Guess what? Same thing here. Um, so basically what this means is if I want to find the inverse of a function, all I have to do is switch the x and the y, uh, you know, the actual x and y variable, and then um, that's going to be my inverse. I'll show you an example of that here too. All right, so in this example here then, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the inverse of f of x, uh, which in this case is negative one-half x plus one. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and graph it. All right, so remember, first of all, f of x is really just a big y, okay? So remember, this is just y. So in other words, this equation is y equals negative one-half x plus one. So remember what we were talking about with um, the relation where we switched the x and the y value here, we'll actually switch the variable x and y. So instead of y equals, we'll have x equals, and then negative one-half, and instead of x, we'll have y plus one. So really that's all, all it really takes to, um, to write the inverse. You just switch the x and the y. However, we want to put this back into its function form. Remember where f of x is, is written first, that means we're trying to get y by itself. So in this equation, we just want to take this, since we've switched the x and the y, and work this all out so that y is by itself now, okay? So, what we and this is something that we've done for a long time now, so I'm just going to get y by itself. So first of all, minus one, those cancel. I have now negative one-half y equals x minus one. And then the last thing is to get the y by itself, it's negative one-half times y. So what undoes multiplying by negative one-half? What undoes that? Multiply by the reciprocal. All right, yeah, remember that from the beginning of the year? So times negative two over one. Uh, the 2 on top cancels the 2 on the bottom. The negative times the negative become a positive. So all that I have left is just 1y. And I have to do the same thing over here, multiply by a negative 2. So when I distribute that, negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 1 is a positive 2. And then you notice how we had the um, f of x written here. This is basically just an equation. And so I want to go just one little step further um, to show that it is the inverse of this. And remember that notation that we were using? Instead of y here, we'll change this back and we'll say f and then that little negative 1. So remember this f and then the negative 1 and x here. This means the inverse of f of x equals negative 2x plus 2. So this is how we would write our answer. So this is saying that the inverse of f of x is negative 2x plus 2. Okay, so that shouldn't be too bad. Um, let's just graph these and, and take a look, quick look at it. So let's start with, I got blue here, so let's start with f of x as our blue one. So remember uh, y equals mx plus b, so I begin at 1, put it down on 1 there, and then negative 1 over 2, that's your slope, so that's how I move, so down 1 and 2 to the right. And I'll do a few of those, and then up one and two to the left. 
up one and two to the left, so uh, then I'll draw a line through this. So there's my graph for f of x. Okay, so maybe I'll even put down here, yeah, I guess so. I'll write that this is the f of x function. All right, let's change colors. Why don't we change to red? All right, so now I'm going to graph the inverse here. So that begins at 2, so we're going to go up to 2 here. And its slope is negative 2 over 1, so it's going to go down 2 and 1 over. Down 2 and 1 over. We'll have a few of those, and we can also go up 2 and 1 to the left. So it's going to look something like that. All right, so and so again, that's the inverse. So that's the inverse. Now remember, um, uh, back at the beginning, we talked about uh, being reflected across that y equals x, which is the identity function. That same thing is happening here. Remember that line is basically a dotted line that go, or well, we saw it as a dotted line that goes through here. And so if you look at this, it's remember it's if something on the blue line, it gets reflected across that dotted line to the other side. So like if you look here, here's the point of 4, negative 1. That got reflected across here on the red line to negative 1, 4. The x's and the y switched. Here's 2, 0 on the blue. On the red, we have 0, 2. There's um, on the blue, 0, 1 and on the red, 1, 0. So remember what we did in the inverse, the inverse of the relation, where um, we switched the x and the y values? Uh, basically, that's happening here. All the x's and the y values are switching. But you can see that, you know, every all these dots over here, you know, this part of the line here got flipped over to, I don't know where my pointer went there. There it is, flipped over to this side here. And these blue dots here on this line kind of flipped down to here on the red line. So anyway, that's that's a key thing here. So again, this was um, y equals x. That's, uh, that's the equation of that line. It's the identity function. Okay? So, all right, let's move on. Inverse uh, functions. Okay. Um, we've just been talking about the inverse functions. And um, there's really two different ways you can probably do this. This is, uh, remember what we just talked about, composition of functions. This is one use of that. Um, and then I'll show you another way you could do this as well that would work just as well. Um, basically, remember what we were saying there that uh, originally, remember that the line uh, or our, our inverse you know, they're reflected across that uh, y equals x line. So basically what this is saying is these two functions, f of x and g of x, are inverses if when we do these compositions, f of g of x and g of f of x, they both equal x. Or in other words, they both equal y equals x. So when we kind of combine those, um, if they both uh, equal x, y equals x, uh, then their inverse, okay? And then I'll show you another way after this. But first, let's let's do that. All right, so we want to find out if these two functions are inverses or not, okay? So remember, you know, the, the way they wrote it there was f of the open circle and g of x. But remember, that really just means f of g of x. I like to look at it this way uh, because then I know I'm plugging g of x in for f. So what's g of x? g of x is this equation over here. So what I'm really doing is I'm trying to find what's f of 4 thirds x plus 8. Okay, so whatever g of x is, I'm going to plug that in to the x in f. So that means it's going to equal 3 fourths times x. x is what? All of this stuff now. 4 thirds x plus 8, uh, and then minus 6. Okay, so we have to distribute this 3 fourths. When we distribute this 3 fourths here, what happens? 4's cancel, 
3 is cancelled. So all I have left is x. Uh, then when I distribute the 3 fourths over to here, think of that as 8 over 1. Uh, 4 will cross cancel and leave 2 up here. And 3 times 2 is 6. So you're going to have plus 6 minus 6, which they cancel and leave you with just x. All right, so far so good. f of g of x equal to x. Okay, so that's the identity function. Now, we, just because one of them works doesn't mean the other one's going to. Uh, you have to try both of them. And so the other thing was g of f of x. So that means I'm going to try to find g of f of x. That means I'm going to put f of x, or this one, into the g function. So that means I'm going to find g of all of this stuff, which means this all of this stuff gets plugged in for that x. So I'm going to have 4 thirds times all of this stuff, 3 fourths x minus 6, and then plus 8. Okay, so i got to work that out. When I distribute 4 thirds times 3 fourths, 3's cancel, 4's cancel, what's left? x. When I go 4 thirds times negative 6, this 3 will cancel and leave me with 2 or minus 2 here. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 plus 8. Cancel, cancel. Okay, both of those compositions, f of g of x and g of f of x, both gave me x. And so therefore, these are, we can say yes, they're inverses. All right, so finally here, you, um, we're going to take, I'm going to look, show you one more way that you can uh, verify that these two functions really are inverses. Um, you know, I just showed you the composition f of g of x and g of f of x and how if you plugged one into the other, uh, it would give you just x. You remember y equals x was our uh, identity function. If you plug f of x into g, and g of x into f, if you do that, both of them give you x. They give you that line um, that kind of splits them in half. But the other way that you could do this uh, is, uh, is this. Remember, f of x is really just y. So remember before, we just switched the x and the y. I'm going to take the f function here, f of x. I'm going to switch the x and the y. So I have x equals 3 fourths y minus 6. Switch to the x and the y. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to find out the inverse of this. I'll get y by itself. And if it matches the g function, I know that they're um, inverses of each other. So let's go through those steps again here. Plus 6. So this is going to be 3 fourths y equals x plus 6. Uh, again, what undoes multiplying by 3 fourths? Multiply by the reciprocal. So times 4 over 3. Multiply this whole thing times 4 over 3. The 3's cancel. The 4's cancel. All you have left is a y. And then here when we distribute, that's going to be 4 thirds x. And then when we take 4 thirds times 6, think of this as like 6 over 1. So the 3 cancels out to be 1, and the 6 would be 2. And then all you do is you take 2 times 4, which is 8. And if you look, you see, oh, y equals 4 thirds x plus 8. Is that the same as this over here? 4 thirds x plus 8. It is the same thing. So therefore, when I found the inverse of the f function, it equaled the g function, so we know that they are inverses of each other. So that's another way that you could do that uh, problem. Instead of doing the compositions there, you could just um, do this. So hopefully that wasn't uh, too bad in this lesson. Um, and uh, hopefully this will be shorter than normal and a little easier than normal, and so it won't be too bad. Um, so thanks for joining me, and uh, just one last word of wisdom. Remember, I ate some pie, and it was delicious. See you next time. Bye.